over to you. Excellent. Thank you so much um, and welcome everyone. I wonder if yourself or Saki would like to um, introduce a little bit about ICAD. Maybe just first of all to introduce um, myself again. So um, I'm Claude Byrne. Um, I'm the Resilience Lead at VSO International. Um, and we've often done these climate sessions, um, these jam boards. Um, and this time we'll be focusing on locally led adaptation principles and putting them into practice. Um, VSO International work with youth volunteers, and we've got a number of them on this call today to share their um, good practice and their work with you. Um, and maybe um, our partner um, who's co-hosting the event with us um, is represented by Saqib and Sohal. So please do introduce um, ICANN's work. Thank you, Claudia. Hi, everybody. My name is Saqib Huck. I'm a program coordinator at the International Center for Climate Change and Development, which is a research and policy think tank based in Dhaka in Bangladesh. And we primarily work on generating research on climate impacts from the most vulnerable communities, from the most impacted areas, and um, developing capacity building collaborations through that in being able to assist people to take the appropriate climate actions and initiatives by themselves. So thank you for this introduction and good to be part in this uh, session today. Thank you. Hi everyone, I'd like to introduce myself. I'm Sohail. I work at yeah, I work at ECAD as a youth program coordinator and as well as, as Sakim has mentioned. We work with mostly on climate actions as well as climate uh, capacity building. Uh, one of the major aspects and components in our organization is also the youth program where we capacitate youth in understanding climate advocacy, climate policies, and as well as making sure that there are the leaders that is necessary for bringing about the climate um, defense or change that is necessary. Thank you. Wonderful, um, and it's great to be partners again. We had um, a Youth Jam last year, so this session, this Youth Jam is focusing on putting locally-led climate principles into practice and um, through youth leadership. Um, and it's really meant to be an interactive space. So we're going to hear and you'll be hearing from you know practitioners. We're going to be hearing from your work as well, um, and bringing these ideas together. Um, but first, I'm going to introduce you to the Jamboard that we're going to be using. Um, so if you haven't used the Jamboard before, it's a Google um, application, um, and it's pretty. Um, it is pretty hopefully accessible. I'm going to just um, show you um, how to use it. So if you want to put some of your ideas um, onto the Jamboard, you can add a sticky note. Um, so I'm going to just write my name here, and you save it. Um, and it should be it should appear as you see on the Jamboard. You can bring it to wherever you want to situate it. And we'll be using this later in the breakout groups. So um, um, yeah, that's the main um, thing. And you can actually add any text that you want to that sticky note. Um, then we're going to also, if you feel like adding an image, um, something from your work, um, you can um, add, upload from your own computer or camera. Um, or through a um, Google image search. And um, you can add those images also alongside your writing if you prefer to use a visual. Um, we're going to be looking um, at the Jamboard within a three topics. We're going to first be looking at locally led adaptation principles and what they are. Um, but then as we go into the breakout groups, you can see you can switch to the next slide. And these will be covered in the great breakout groups. What principles are we putting into practice and what are the challenges around that? and our messages for COP27. So you can see we've got four pages um, in this um, Jamboard. And we're gonna start now with our um, first page, which is really reviewing what the locally led principles are. And then we're gonna hear from a few of our colleagues who are on the call, um, youth leaders, on how they are putting these principles into practice. So the first principle we're gonna cover, you can see it's represented by this blue square. Um, it's basically devolving decision making to the lowest appropriate level. Um, so this means that we're supporting local institutions, communities, committees within the community to make decisions on what climate action they need and make sure that their um, needs and, um, and priorities are implemented. The second um, blue block is about addressing the structural inequalities um, faced by most marginalized groups, women, youth, children, people with disabilities, um, and making sure that their parties again and the root causes of their vulnerability are addressed in any climate action or policy. Um, the third one, you can see it's all about the cashier, so providing predictable funding that can be accessed 
easily. So that these can this funding at the moment is not really trickling down to communities and making sure that finance can be accessed by the communities for adaptation processes. Um, and then the fourth green box here represents institutional capacity. So the fourth um, principle um, of locally led adaptation is about improving capacities of local institutions to ensure that they can both understand climate risks and uncertainties, but also generate the solutions and manage those solutions um, over time. Um, orange box here, principle number five is about developing and building our understanding of climate risk and uncertainty. Um, so making sure that we're supporting risk management processes that are participatory, but also that includes monitoring and learning systems. Principle number six is flexible programming and learning. And this is really critical um, when we see the conditions on the ground change. Um, as risks change and as climate solutions are implemented, our programming and our solutions need to adapt. So making sure that programming on climate adaptation is flexible, incorporates learning and it adapts to new contexts is critical. Um, and then finally, um, the last two, the set, number seven is about ensuring transparency and accountability um, within um, climate adaptation delivery. And finally, collaborative action and investment. So making sure that there's collaboration across sectors, collaboration across stakeholders, and also collaboration across scales from local to national and global level. So that's a snapshot of whirlwind tour of the locally led adaptation principles. Um, I'm gonna call on some of the youth in this room um, as an introduction to share um, how they're gonna be put, how they are already putting these principles into practice through youth leadership. Um, so first of all, can I call on my colleague, um, Mathina, um, to share how you in Mozambique are through youth engagement, building locally led capacities in this case with the national youth um, platform um, to support um, climate resilience. So over to you, Mafina, it'd be great to hear about the work you're doing to put this principle into practice. Thank you, Claude. Uh, so first of all, I would like to thank you uh, to let us be able to, to join this platform and uh, what our youth are involved in the lead of uh, resilient and climate action. In Mozambique, um, the initiative is a regional uh, between Mozambique, Zimbabwe, and uh, Eswatini. And from our side, the project is uh, being leading by two volunteers, two national volunteers, uh, me as a, a youth engagement, and uh, my colleague that is here also is Jamal, who is DRR advisor. And uh, the project objective is to build resili resilience and adaptive capacity of vulnerable people, specifically small the farmers, association groups, which include also people with disability. So uh, first of all, to address climate change, uh, the team uh, conducted resilience and disaster preparedness uh, training for national volunteers, around 30 national volunteers last year. Uh, so uh, when this training finished, uh, to build the capacity of workforce volunteers under a national volunteering uh, platform, uh, the both national volunteers build the capacity for three workforce volunteers. They went in the community of Domen Rotanda and they deliver the risk assessment and preparedness plan on the community uh, by using a timeline as a tool to discover what kind or what type of hazards uh, happens a lot in the community and for how long. Also, uh, they use a vulnerability tree to see where exactly this specific community is more vulnerable. And also they assess the capacity tree to see what resources in terms of institutional, in terms of people, the community have uh, to survive the cyclones. So during this is specifically risk assessment and preparedness plan, the community end up uh, designing their own uh, plan action 
to survive the hazard, future shocks. Uh, so the team supported the both community. And as a result of uh, this uh, action plan, uh, the community received first aid training. Uh, the community also received agroecology training. Uh, the community also uh, had opportunity uh, to, to open or to be uh, training on the creation of DRR committee. So in partnership with the uh, in National Institute of Disaster uh, Management, VSO team tried to connect the community DRR with these uh, government uh, departments that lead with the disasters to make sure that they will be more sustainable, even inside VSO or outside VSO. So also to make sure that these uh, com committees, DRR committees are sustainable, uh, the team makes sure that part of the members of this DRR committee was also trained on agroecology to make sure that they will remain sitting, they will do other things outside the disaster management to make to maintain the group awake. And also now they can answer directly to the government department of disaster management. So through this action uh, of youth, a VSO now is enabled or is part of disaster management cluster uh, in Manica specifically. So we want to grow more up on top, but specifically with the national uh, youth counseling, we are working on a volunteering national standards uh, where we have once a year a conference of volunteering where we can discuss the national standard uh, levels also to bring also the global uh, standards about the, the volunteering. So also we work with the girls in school because in the in Mozambique community, most of the girls are not illiterate in the community. The other side, if they are illiterate, they are literate, uh, the family pressure about the social inclusion gender force them to go get out from the school. So in Mozambique, uh, we are implementing two projects, Resilience and Livelihood, and also we have Ego. So we're trying to connect both uh, projects to make more sustainable, specifically for girls, to have a bright future, uh, to have a, a opportunity of uh, livelihood and resilience, and build the resilience also under schools through DR clubs. So thank you. This is what I would like to share. Thank you, Claude. Wonderful. Thank you so much, Mafina. And I think as you shared that, you know, um, I saw all the um, boxes on our climate jam come alive. You gave the example of how you're strengthening that national youth platform um, so that they can undertake climate action, understand climate risk, and also strengthen the system for climate resilience. Um, but you also gave some really good examples of how you're actually supporting communities on the ground. So that might be number two, how you're supporting some of those communities who are not receiving climate support, receive that support, particularly focusing on marginalized groups as well. So you gave lots of examples of the different principles being put into practice. Thank you, Mafina. Um, and you can see a photo here of um, Mafina, and I'll put one of Jamal later on um, under this box, investing in local capacities. Um, this is um, her and her team in action. Okay, I'm going to now um, move over to um, another um, of my colleagues um, from Zimbabwe. Um, I don't know, Simba, um, if you or William would like to share how in Zimbabwe you're supporting strength and decision making, devolving decision making to local government and, and youth level um, through engaging in climate action planning and climate monitoring. Um, so I'd love to hear your example, Simba, if you can share it with us. Okay, thank you very much. Uh, I'll give an example of uh, how we are trying to engage with uh, our youth in the drive to address some of the effects of climate change. I hope you can hear me. We can, we can hear you clearly, thank you. 
Okay, so so like uh, under TFA, and uh, we we mainly work through church networks. So like in the issue of uh, devolving decision making, you find out that uh, this uh, principle is more enhanced through our reach to to different uh, church organizations and even the church denominations, even those that are far. Uh, deep in the rural setups, they are fully involved and they participate in their and in, in their views and their opinions are also embraced. Then we also have uh, youth networks. We also re realize that youths are mostly uh, marginalized in terms of kind of uh, a lot of things that affect them. So our 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 work it it also centered on our youth network so that the voice of the youth and also empowerment programs targeted for youth can also be implemented and promoted. I think that's what I can share for now. Thank you. Wonderful. I'm pleased to send um if you can um if you can access the jam board. I'd love you to put a photo of that great work you're doing in tier fund and maybe place it in the um, principle that you feel is most relevant. It sounds from the work um, in tier fund, you're actually putting a number of these principles into practice, um, but choose one of the squares you feel is relevant. And if you can upload a photo of the work in tier fund and put it on the jam board, it'd be great to see it there. Thank you for that example. And um, would anyone else like to share an example? Yeah. yeah. Okay. It's, a, it's another Simba. <laughs> I've realized we have two Simbas on the call. Excellent, great. Yes. We we can, uh, so many I'll share the other example also from Zimbabwe, uh, where we're working with uh, young people in Chimani Mani. That's a district which has been affected by Cyclone Idai and other tropical storms are uh, late. So uh, we're working with the community volunteers that have been trained within the area so that they are, can be better able to respond and also bounce back uh, after this uh, disaster. Uh, disasters. So what we have done is we have trained our community volunteers in terms of uh, collecting information from their respective wards. So within those wards, they also do the assessments, they conduct action planning with their communities. So the communities, they own the process in terms of uh, the disaster preparedness planning and also creating action plans that they are follow up. So also cascade those action plans to also a district level where our community volunteers who are young, mainly young people are also in included in the decision-making process uh, in the district disaster management plans, where they collect information and also are involved in the decision-making at district level on issues of disaster response, on issues of preparedness planning. So our youth volunteers are part and parcel of the civil protection unit. They're also part and parcel of the disaster risk reduction committees within their different wards. And they also add their voice uh, whenever they meet as, as, as a district. So in terms of devolution of power, in terms of devolution of decision-making power, there's a great in terms of uh, participation and inclusivity from our young people and also young uh, women in terms of issues of, of climate change. Uh, so this has also led to some climate uh, resilient approaches that we have also started to work with our young people, especially around issues of agroecology, training our farmers on sustainable agriculture, which was also on issues of climate change awareness, uh, so this is some of the work that we're doing with our youth. Okay, over to you, Claudia. Brilliant. Thank you, Simba. Um, I was wondering um, where you feel um, the principles you're putting into practice, which principle do you feel is coming out strongest from that example? I can certainly see transparency and accountability. I can see decision making being influenced. Where would you um, put your work under this, um, this framework? Uh, yes, Claude. Uh, I would think on the first principle, which is mainly on devolving decision making to the lowest appropriate level. So I've seen in terms of the participation of these young people on issues of um, uh, decision making power over uh, issues of ad adaptation, issues or even of monitoring the progress being done by the action uh, plans from the community. So I think the devolution of decision making power is being witnessed uh, in the work that we're, uh, we are doing. Thank you, Simba. And I think what's fascinating from the example that you have um, is the devolving decision making to the lowest appropriate levels starts leading towards more transparency and accountability as the youth are being invited to monitor those action plans being put into practice and even updating 
those action plans. Um, I can also see from your work how that also leads to these structural inequalities, the work that you're doing in response to that in agroecology and um, you know, work on the ground is also such an important part of it. So um, well done. Thank you, Simba, and keep up the great work. Um, and then maybe can I ask my colleagues at um, ICAD, um, Zakib, if um, you'd like to share an example of how um, your youth volunteers or the youth you're engaging with are putting um, a particular principle or a set of principles into practice through a specific intervention. Thank you, Claudia. Um, so again, as I mentioned in my introduction that I, I work at the International Center for Climate Change and Development, and we work focused mainly on research generation about climate risk and uncertainty and uh, delivering that into cap capacity building modules and training and support and guidance that we can provide. So what my colleague and I primarily focus on from our youth program is principle number four, which is investing in local capabilities. What we try and do is ensure that there are local um, students, community members, uh, local representatives, who are already doing quite a lot of work, who are already taking quite a lot of um, actions and adaptation initiatives on their own, and looking at those uh, individuals, trying to pinpoint what is it that they're doing in their community and being able to assist them in whatever climate actions they take. This can be guidance and support through um, um, technical sessions and webinars such as these. These can be about linking them up with other networks that are working on similar areas and just being able to invest in, in local um, leadership capabilities that we find individuals that are really, really keen and interested and, as I said, already doing these things from their own resources and from their own efforts. And it's about providing support and working with them to do that. So what I would hope that um, from today's session, as well as all the sessions over uh, CBA, that all the participants, such as yourselves, really think about what is it that you are able to do in terms of um, working in collaboration with people, finding individuals that are doing like um, similar things, being able to support them and assist them, even if it is just to have a conversation and talk about some of the challenges that you face and being able to uh, collaborate through networking with people that you meet on these platforms, as well as in our breakout group. So I'll, I'll end with that over there. Thank Back to you, Claudia. Excellent. Thank you so much, Sakib, um, and really good um, advice. I think all of us um, have the opportunity to really um, fast track and, and scale up the locally led adaptation principles, and many of you already are. Um, so I think this session can really help us identify how we can even um, do that further in the work that we're doing. So thank you for that, Sakib. Um, and please do feel free, if you can, um, download a picture of the work at ICAD, an example of that please put it on the Jamboard. Um, we do have a Jamboard link now in the um, chat panel. So if you, if you are doing some work on climate change and you'd like to add your pic picture to this Jamboard, um, please do share and um, put a photo of the work that you're doing and put it into any of the sections you feel are um, applicable to the work that you're doing. Um, okay, so we're gonna go into breakout groups shortly, but potentially before we go into breakout groups, I'll maybe take two more examples of anyone in the room who'd like to share any example of um, work that they're doing as a youth volunteer or youth leader or working with youth um, themselves on putting the principles into practice. Is there any principle that you've not yet heard talked about that you're putting into practice in your work? Um, so please feel free to um, unmute um, and give an example. Um, yeah, we've got, I think, room for two more examples before we go into breakouts. Um, Claude, just while maybe um, people are taking a little time to think about some responses, I think the link isn't giving the um, edit functions. Maybe we might need to just um, redo the link if you change the access okay. on the share. Yeah, let me change. So the share is, so yes, please um, let me know everyone if you can't access the link. Um, so we do have um, in the meeting, it should be anyone with the link should be able to view it. Okay, so let's put anyone with the link can edit it. So now you should be able to add any wording or pictures. Thank you, Sakib. So if you can just first of all check, you can access the link to the Jamboard on the side panel and then see if you can put a photo of you at work or any work that you do or even a word that you feel is important on this first Jamboard. You can see it's um, page two on the Jamboard and it's um, showing the different principles. Um, so yeah, if we can test that functionality by putting an image or a word um, from the work that you're doing, um, that would be great. Or you can even put your organization against one of the principles that you feel that you're putting into practice. 
to just give a minute or two and um, for people to add um, either the organization against um, one of the principles or a photo of the work that you're doing. Um, and while, while we're um, checking that, um, yeah, maybe I'll ask my colleague Christine um, from Kenya, um, who's working with youth in Kenya on climate action. Can you give an example of the work you're doing, Christine? I know you're doing a lot to support um, addressing the structural inequalities um, experienced in relation to access to food in Kenya. So it'd be great to hear how you're putting that principle into practice in the work that you're doing. Thank you, Claudia. Um, I hope you can all hear me. It's raining uh, heavily over here, so I'm also struggling to talk because I feel like I'm talking too loudly. Um, it's really nice to see uh, all of you doing really good things. Uh, in Kenya, uh, sorry, my name is Justine. I am based in Nairobi, Kenya, and I work also in uh, the rural areas uh, with youth, uh, persons with disabilities, and women on uh, matters, food systems, agricultural practices, and how to uh, foster climate resilient agriculture. So um, um, uh, I'd say for the past one year, I have in, I engaged youth in, um, in, in organizing discussions and community dialogues uh, organized fully by youth volunteers, uh, youth small scale farmers, women, persons with disability to highlight issues in, in the agricultural sector that needed to be acted upon. So, um, you know, after gathering all these uh, voices from young people in their communities on uh, matters they hold strongly about uh, in terms of uh, trying to adapt to um, local um, capacity in, in, in adaptation, the youth were able to present the key messages at uh, different levels, uh, could be local, national, and regional level uh, in terms of um, how the different stakeholders can contribute to, how the different stakeholders can play their role in contributing to enabling the youth to adapt to uh, local led adaptations. So um, I would say uh, it was really uh, effective as um, different youth in different counties, or rather some of you would call them regions um, here in Kenya, were able to hold discussions with different stakeholders, uh, be it the Ministry of Agriculture, be it uh, civil society, be it uh, educational institutions. So they're able to uh, hold discussions and each of the stakeholder could um, highlight their role and able to share ideas on how best to come into play in terms of uh, supporting the industry. So uh, through that, some of the youth um, have been appointed in um, say, they're the called uh, this county, county um, steering group, county steering committees in their regions to just be able to continue with the process as well. And uh, um, of, 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 of um, the, 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 the outcomes that came from the dialogues were able to be incorporated in county youth policy papers and uh, such as food security, uh, climate change issues such as environmental conservation, uh, which is also linked to youth employment and unemployment. So they were embedded into this county policy and it was really nice to see them because when the part of the, the 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 policy processes now we are sure that they will be put in the county budgets as well and implementation at the end of it all uh today i have just come from a session with the young people in nairobi county so we had a gathering of young people of about 35 young people to just uh, highlight the key issues uh, in the county integrated development plans. So they, the, they, they were um, able to highlight the issue uh, within the sector, uh, which is majorly youth, and uh, able to understand what were the constraints 
and uh, what were the courses, what can we do, what opportunity presents itself. So when we go through, when we highlight what the county integrated development plans are and how we want it to be, to be able to provide an enabling environment for young people, we're sure that it's going to be integrated in the program of the county. So um, this is um, a really good starting point and a step towards um, uh, enhancing and amplifying uh, the, the voices of young people. So uh, we, we will not say we were not engaged and we will not say that we did not um, put our ideas into play. Uh, so besides that, I work with um, women and persons with disability and also youth farmers in the rural areas. We support uh, VSO uh, or, and other community volunteers, including youth-led organizations like the Youth for Sustainable Development. We support uh, the, 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 the communities in terms of adopting to the agroecological processes, the climate resilient agriculture, and to see how best to uh, uh, um, embrace alternative means of farming, uh, like uh, drought resistant crops as well, trying um, to support them in terms of procuring solar pumps to water the, the, the farms because of uh, there has been a lot of drought and farming in the area. So water shortage has been, and, and water scarcity is so massive. So we support them into doing these things and also to embrace um, the renewable energy uh, sector so that they can still uh, tackle the food insecurity in their, in their communities. And I, I, I feel like it's, um, it's been on well because in one county we have a demo, an agroecological agro uh, demo farm, demonstration farm, where a group of young people were able to demonstrate how best to practice agroecology farming and other young people able to learn from that example and practice it in their own uh, farms as well. So it creates, bridges the gap, uh, the knowledge gap um, and capacity gap of how to do um, the process in terms of uh, locally led um, adaptation processes. Uh, so I, in a nutshell, that's uh, what we are doing at the moment. Thank you, Christina. I think you um, highlighted perfectly again how the principles actually can blend into each other. So although you were starting at the point of really understanding the inequalities faced by women and youth um, and, and children even in terms of food insecurity and the vulnerabilities that were driving that and taking action on that, you've also supported system change so that's strengthening um, the system um, and um, supported um, collaborative action with local governments um, and leading then to actually supporting uh, actions that address those um, um, inequalities on the ground, again, um, supporting the agroecology interventions. So again, um, putting multiple principles into practice through that innovative work. So thank you for sharing that with us. Um, now we're going to create some space for us to kind of dive down into some more examples um hear from you um a little bit more about those examples um how are you putting the principles into practice as a youth volunteer or youth organization but we also would like to hear about the challenges so are there any challenges um in those uh, in the work that you're doing that although you might be addressing structural inequality you might find um others that are very difficult to address and um, although you might be making some headway into improving transparency transparency and accountability as a youth volunteer um, or leader, are there actual um, blockages to that? Um, or is there a specific principle that we're not hearing about in these examples? So what ways, any other examples that you'd like to share of the work that you're doing to drive forward the principles, but we'd also like to hear what are the challenges um, that you're facing? Um, 
you can do this in the breakout group um, you can actually share that um, with with the um, with your group um, but also while others are sharing you can also put the sticky notes in so again um, if you'd like to add a sticky note just um, tap on the sticky note and um, you can just type that whatever you want to say save it and then you can um, slot that in wherever you would like to on the board so we'd like to know which principles are you um, or your organization working on or putting into practice and what are the challenges you face um, are there any principles that are more challenging than others for you to engage with or enact? Um, so you've got um, 20 minutes, 25 minutes in the breakout group. So we'd like you to take those two questions. Um, and then also in each breakout group, we'd like to agree a recommendation. Um, so your group as a whole can agree one recommendation of how we can scale up enacting the locally led principles at COP27 or beyond. How can we scale these principles? Um, how, do we, how do we make sure we're scaling up how they're put into practice? So is there any action we can take either at COP27 or beyond to, to encourage that those principles are adopted and scaled up? Um, so um, I'm just going to ask um, my colleague um, from ICAD to, um, to break us out into, um, I think, maybe four breakout groups, if that's okay. Um, let's do four then. Maybe. Yeah, or three. Three is fine as well, whichever. I think I think we can do maybe three. 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 Would be okay. Let's do three breakout groups, and then myself or Sakib or Sohal should be um, with you as a facilitator. Um, and then if you've got any questions about the Jamboard or the questions, we can answer them. But basically, we want to hear how you're putting the principles into practice, more ways, the challenges you're facing, and then how we can scale up the principles. Um, at COP, um, at, at the level, global level, or um, after COP. Yeah, and please do keep on populating the Jamboard. You can put photos, you can put messages. Um, it's your Jamboard, so put whatever you feel you'd like to share. Right. Um, sorry to jump in, but all the other rooms have open, have been open. Um, unfortunately, I will be needing to stay in the main gallery um, Zoom. Otherwise, the whole session should, would be closing. Okay. Thank you. Um, that's that's fine. Um, and if there's anyone else who can't break out, maybe they can join you there um, um, to answer the questions as well. See you in the breakout groups. Joel, uh, would you like to assign the remaining people into a room then? If you're not able uh, to facilitate everyone, it. Everyone has been assigned to a room. Um, no, but if you're not able to um, facilitate one, would you, the remaining people, can you just direct them? If you're able to just put them into room one or room two or whichever one. I don't know. Everyone on the current plenary has been assigned to a room. So I don't know why.
Hello, so hell. Hello. Hi, can you hear me? Yeah, I can hear you. Hey, um, actually, I want to tell I have uh, put some input there, but I'm driving right now. So, mm -hmm. um, can I add after thirty minutes? Um, will the Jamboard be still open? The Jamboard will be still open, yes, but the session, the that part of the section uh, session will be over with. So that shouldn't be a problem. Okay, cool. Though I added, and there's a terrible, uh, terrible, terrible, um. Uh, internet connection as I'm driving. So I hope that I'm I'm trying to write the things, parking my car, but still it's not up. So I hope I, I can do it after half an hour, maybe. Sure, sure, sure. Um, sure. So okay, cool. And um, can you just provide me your email address so that I can just keep it, if that's sure. fine? Um, wait, I'll just send it to you on chat, if that's fine. Cool. okay perfect cool thank you very much so i'll just put put up more up, up, updates um within half an hour no worries um thank you for joining in uh drive safe <laughs> thank you very much see ya see ya bye-bye bye, -bye. bye.
Welcome back, everyone. We're just letting everyone settle back um, from the really fascinating um, dialogues that we were having in the breakout um, groups. Um, and I know that not all of you might have had a chance to populate the Jamboards because we were doing so much conversing and discussion. So if you have any points that you would like to really reflect from the breakout group, please put that on the jam board. Um, but in the meantime, um, we've got just um, just over 10 minutes left. So I'm gonna go to each of the facilitators um, or maybe one of the people in the breakout group um, just to hear um, maybe three key points, you know, um, um, coming from that breakout group. Um, did you identify any challenges or constraints? Was there any really ex um, exciting example um, of a principle and practice? Mm -hmm. um, and what were the messages you were identifying to scale up locally led adaptation? Did you have a message for COP27 or beyond? Um, so maybe let's start um, Saqib with your with your breakout group. Thank you, Claudia. Um, so I think just a couple of the key challenges that we were focusing on is that came up quite a lot is in terms of working with youth at the, the local community level. Oftentimes there's a little bit of a language barrier, not with, only within um, us as practitioners working with the youth, but also within the youth in different regions being based on local languages and local um, tribes and so on. So I think, you know, breaking down those barriers and being able to address everybody collectively, pulling them together has been one of the challenges in terms of all the different uh, nuances in, in, in languages, particularly in our sector where everything is very jargon heavy. So that's been one of the, the key challenges and criticisms in being able to interact youth. And one of the uh, key principles that we were discussing was looking at patient and predictable funding, which again, with being very jargon heavy and not really having quite clear instructions that are understandable for young people, it makes it difficult for them to access any, any funding and find out where these funding channels are, what are these opportunities. So I think those are some of the things that we were focusing on. I'd also maybe just pick on one of the points that we had um, relating to how to um, take these messages to the COP. One of the issues that uh, was uh, echoed by quite a lot of our people in our group was being able to localize the COP, that not only by taking some of the voices from local communities, hearing those experiences directly at the conferences, but also being able to have more localized uh, COP um, type events and dialogues, particularly sessions such as this and, and CBA, so that you're really able to um, learn and talk about a lot of the, the activities that people are doing, where people are active and being able to find collaborations and synergies. So I'll leave it at that. If there are anything from our group, um, anybody would else to, like to add some additional points, please feel free. Back to you, Claudia. Amazing. Um, thank you. Well, maybe I'll um, just see if any of um, your group would like to share anything else um, before I comment, because I think that's very inspiring and reflects a little bit about what we were talking about in our group as well. Um, anyone who was in Sakib's group that would like to add to that? So I think you expressed it perfectly, Sakib. So um, we were also, so um, in our breakout group, um, we were also identifying the issue of um, ensuring um, that um, looking at the um, difference that, that communities are not holistic, they're not, um, um, you know, um, representing one group, there are different interests um, and potentially different competing agendas within um, communities. Um, but we also heard some fascinating examples um, from Daniel and Christine about how some of those um, um, chasms between groups. Um, so we looked at the particular example of youth and older people and elders within groups can be bridged um, through dialogue um, and through joint interventions. Um, so um, youth can also play a role in actually um, identifying these um, potential conflicts and also identifying the solutions to bring communities together. The other example we kind of found was actually making sure that actions were actually disaggregated, not about everyone agreeing to the actions, but making sure that different um, stakeholders parties are also reflected um, in those action um, plans. Um, the second um, challenge we found was around the will, sometimes at local level of local government, of the duty bearers for climate action, to um, support actions are prioritized. Um, and then Simba was sharing how actually engaging them early on in risk assessments and action planning processes means that they've got more ownership and much more likely to have to commit. Um, and then Christine was making the point of making sure that we're also ensuring we're, we're following up on planning and making sure that they are identifying the sectors in which they 
should be um, adapting their programming. Um, so that, yeah, very reflective of what you were sharing to keep. And I love the idea of localizing COP27 because that's a counterweight we were identifying actually, you know, to really have stakeholders at COP27 and within the adaptation work stream agreeing um, to um, the adaptation principles um, as one of the um, ways that we actually transfer funds it should be alongside the funding transfer um could mean that we're connecting the funding um, to ensuring that they it's reaching local local level um so on that maybe can i ask maybe any the rest of my group um if there was anything that you felt came strongly from from our breakout group uh, so um one thing that fascinated me one thing that was key to me was the fact that we should not um, just see the principles as uh, just locally adaptation principles, but also as practices that we can actually put to action in our different uh, communities and countries, because that's that's the key to actually adapting, uh, you know, a sustainable locally led uh, action. So um, don't just see them as principles. We can read them here and, and, and just share as principles, but also try to see how best you can adapt one or two as a practice and also share with someone else to adapt the, the other one. And then you can collaborate uh, later on and see how best you can work together. So that that really was uh, very key and something I am willing to adopt here. That's amazing. Thank you, Christine. So great um, reflection. Um, and actually what we were observing that so much practice already happening through youth that they might connect to principles, but actually happening already on the ground. So as you say, Christine, connecting the principles to the real practice, I'm also understanding that we can't do everything. So we need to connect potentially some people do the on the ground work, others can do the advocacy and policy, um, but connecting together and collaborating, which is one of the principles can achieve really um, larger and more um, sustainable results. Um, I'm gonna go into breakout group three. Um, I don't know if there's a, um, um, a facilitator or a representative of that, of that group who, who can share um, what you discussed, if there was any principle or challenge or message um, for COP27 that you focused in, on. So was anyone not in my group or Saqib's group? Because um, I think you were actually without a facilitator, um, but you probably self-facilitated. Um, so in breakout number three, who was who was there? And what do you chat about? And maybe just check in with um so how did do we have three groups or did we only have two groups ultimately uh we had two at the end um we started off with three but then we just merged the third with the other two that way we got a bit more participants excellent so that explains why we got some really dynamic participants joining us um in our sessions thank you for that um, so maybe let's just reflect, um, just looking at the Jamboard itself, um, so the principles um, that we see kind of um, on the Jamboard that have been identified as a collaborative action investment, flexible programming, and providing patent, predictable funding, and these are all, I think, um, some of the um, um, principles that have been identified as opportunities, but also came out in some discussions as challenges. Um, and the challenges um, that I think um, we're identifying as a group are the limited time to implement programs um, for youth. And we also have, sorry, it's quite close, um, some um, miscommunication between um, funders and youth. Um, so sometimes the language use, the type of funding is not accessible or um, um, easy to understand. Um, so it creates barriers. Um, we have youth and other marginalized communities having more immediate needs. Um, then needs um then that needs to be able to um so they can't participate 
particularly in marginalized communities, I think that's really true that, you know, some of these barriers are real barriers. It's about time and the ability to actually generate an income or actually feed a family or, um, you know, um, and that can be a real barrier to participating in processes, which can be also quite lengthy and, and time bound. Um, so um, I think that's a real challenge. Um, and it's the challenge for many marginalized groups, you know, even when we're trying to connect with communities, being aware that um, we need to, you know, ensure that those processes are accessible and that we're bridging some of those um, barriers, might be providing refreshments or making sure we're supporting per diems for youth leaders so that they can continue um, to support the work. Um, people speak on behalf of youth rather than youth themselves getting a share of the stories. So yes, and I think that's um, you know representation and making sure that we do have youth um, you know in sessions such as this who are really leading um, the advocacy on their own um, behalf. But also I, I've seen youth um, being really strong advocates for other groups. So often it can be youth themselves who might not just be representing youth, but they might be representing, for example, children. And VSO are doing quite a lot of work in education systems and youth will actually speak on behalf of children and potentially other vulnerable groups. Um, and then we also have um, other challenges such as budgets, um, specific budgets to support disaster management, climate adaptation, the budget still aren't reaching the ground and the funders are not aware of specific value of engaging youth or youth needs. Um, so thank you for all these um, really great examples and please do keep on putting them on because I think there were many that we discussed that may not yet be on the Jamboard but we'll make sure we can document them. And finally, how do we scale up enacting locally led adaptation principles at COP27 and beyond? So um, the first one is really ensuring that youth are re recognized for their time and that they are um, compensated for that um, so they can fully participate. Um, having more collaboration opportunities um, with like this session in, um, in, in COP26. So I love that localized COP and make sure that this experience really can inform um, and guide the decisions made at COP um, and ensuring that the grassroots are meaningful engaged in the negotiation rooms um, and further increasing flexibility of funding, especially for youth-led um, projects, um, less detailed applications, make sure that they're accessible, um, amplify local knowledge, funding support for resilience is crucial. Um, thank you all. I just want to say a huge thanks for all of this, um, these ideas and your time. Um, and we're going to document this session so we can share back with you all the knowledge we've generated today. Um, and yeah, really inspired by, you know, as, as Christine said, you know, we're not um, just hearing about principles, we're hearing about practice. So you're already, um, you know, the leaders in this space. Um, and hopefully within these recommendations for COP27, and we can find more space for voices such as yours to inform decisions. Um, so we're scaling up the practice of these um, locally led principles on the ground. Um, maybe over to you, Sakib or Sohal, to, to close us off. Thank you, Claudia. Um, I'm going to keep my video off just because I think my network is a little bit low. But um, again, thank you to everybody for joining today. And particularly, thank you, Claudia, for taking a lot of the lead and setting this up. I think it was a really, really good session. And we got some really interesting feedback. And as, as Claudia mentioned, we would like to be able to engage. So please do consider all the work that we've been doing during the conference as well, during CBA 16, as a community of practice. So please do check in on some of the work, some of the networks that you're uh, connections that you're making with people. Please do feel free to reach out to us us find our um, links on the profile and do reach out and just share some of the work that you're doing any types of ways that you might be able to assist and in some ways that we might be able to assist you as well so with that um, th th that's it from my side thank you so much thank you everyone and we'll see you hopefully keep in contact with Sakib said um, and we'll see you at the next MCBA hopefully and maybe cop in the meantime and let's keep connected let's keep on um, connecting and collaborating. Have, have a good evening um, and afternoon, everyone.